Welcome to Power Code Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the Yamaha TX81Z tone module and why I still use it. Initially released back in 1987, the Yamaha TX81Z is a rack mount version of the Yamaha DX11 keyboard. What made the TX81Z different from other earlier FM synthesizers of that time was that it was the first to offer a range of oscillator waveforms other than just sine waves. The updated timbers of some of its patches really made it stand out when compared to older sine wave only FM synthesizers. The TX81Z was popular, make no mistake. This was primarily because of its preset bass oriented sounds. A keyboard version, again, with more editing functionality, was released in 1988 and branded the Yamaha DX11. Now, this is important. In order to understand the TX81Z, you must first understand FM, at least have a basic understanding of it. FM stands for Frequency Modulation. In FM, one waveform modulates another waveform, which in turn creates a new and more complex waveform, as shown on your screen. FM synthesis requires two oscillators. The upper one is called the modulator, and the lower one, which goes directly to the output of the synthesizer, is called the carrier. The complexity of the highs of the resulting waveform will depend upon the output level of the modulator. TX81Z features synth sounds that are similar to the DX21 and the DX27. Now some argue that the TX81Z was never as good as the DX7 synthesizer, but it is an inexpensive source of those sounds and has a wider range of tones than that of the legendary DX7 synth. TX81Z was one of the first sound modules that I ever bought and I still have mine. I use it today because it's hard to find anything else that sounds quite like it. Today, sound designers and others who are looking to find those edgy vintage 80 FM sounds often use plugins to try to emulate tone modules like the TX81Z. However, I've always believed there's nothing like the real thing. And now let's analyze the features of the Yamaha TX81Z Tone Generator. The unit produces up to eight different voices simultaneously, which made it good for use with a MIDI sequencer. Voices and all memory parameters can be edited from the front panel. The LSI or Large Scale Integration Tone Generator chip performs FM synthesis using eight different waveforms. Pseudo reverb effects are programmable for each voice. Now, a fixed or ratio frequencies are selectable for each operator as well. Two independent LFOs and a vibrato generator is available. Now, while voice and function data is compatible with the following synthesizer voice data, the sound quality has been upgraded and the resolution of the envelope generators has been improved from the previous Yamaha FM synthesizers and tone modules of that era. The unit has 128 ROM factory preset voices, 32 user programmable voice memories, 24 user programmable performance memories, and 13 microtonal scales. Pan, single note chord, and transpose delay effects are available, and you would save and load TX81Z memory data to and from a digital recorder. Now, formerly you would use a cassette recorder when the unit was initially released. You would transmit and receive TX81Z memory data via MIDI and a program change table for redirecting program change messages is also available. Alternate voice assign lets you play a different voice with each successive note. Next, we'll review the Yamaha TX81Z's technical specifications. The unit is 8 voice polyphony and 8 voice multi timbral. For oscillators, it has 4 operators per voice and 8 waveforms. 
there are two LFOs in performance as well as dedicated vibrato mode, again, multi timbral mode. There's one in single voice mode that's assignable to pitch or amplitude. For synthesis, again, this is a digital frequency modulation or FM tone module, and it's velocity sensitive and aftertouch sensitive. For memory, we have 128 factory presets, 32 user patches, and 24 user performances. For effects, we have reverb, delay, pan, and chord. Under hardware, we have a proprietary Yamaha chip, as well as a 63B03 CPU. For MIDI, we have in, out, and through. And for the cassette terminal, that is an 8-pin DIN. Let's take a moment to check out the TX81Z's preset voice names. The TX81Z has five banks of 32 voices which are on your screen now. Banks A through D contain factory preset voices. When the unit was initially shipped, bank I, which is not shown on your screen, contains selected voices from banks A through D. You would use the parameter keys to select banks I, A, B, C or D and then use the data entry keys to select voices 1 through 32 in each bank. Now here's a quick sound demo of some of the TX81Z patches to show you just how vintage, quirky and unique this tone module was and is. <laughs> Now we'll look at how the TX81Z works. TX81Z has two main modes. Each main mode has three submodes. And now you would get to your modes by pushing the play perform button. The first mode is the single mode. The first submode under the single mode is the play mode. Here you would select and play of any voice using chords of up to eight notes. The second submode under single is edit. You would create your own voices or modify an existing voice here. The third submode under single is the utility mode. Here you would save and load data, set microtonal tables, set program change table information, you would set your pan, delay, and chord effects, and so on. The next main mode is your performance mode. Again, you would use the play perform button to get to this mode. The first submode under performance is the a play submode. Now the TX81Z acts as up to eight independent instruments as specified in the performance memory that you select. Here's your multi temporal functionality. The second submode under performance is edit. Here you would change the settings of a performance memory. The last submode under performance is the utility submode. Here you would set a performance to a basic setting and so on. At this point, we'll examine the Yamaha TX81Z's front panel controls. First, we have the on-off power button. Then we move on to the LCD display. This is a two-row, 16-character liquid crystal display, and it's backlit for high visibility, or should I say better visibility. Now, underneath of the unit is a pull-out card that lists the main operations of the TX81Z. You don't see stuff like that anymore. Next is the store, 
slash eg copy button. In play performance mode, this is used to store voices or performances. In the single edit mode, it copies the envelope setting from one operator to another. After that, we have the utility button. This enters utility mode where you can save and load data, set up effects, and microtonal scales. You can also perform various other useful functions. After that, we have the Edit Compare button. In single mode, this enters the single edit mode and selects the edited voice for the, or excuse me, the original voice. The blinking Edit Compare LED indicates that the original voice is selected. Now, when you go into performance mode, this enters the performance edit mode. After that, we have the play perform button. When already in play mode, this selects the single or performance mode. If you have been in utility or edit, this returns you to the play mode. The LED blinks to indicate an incoming note. After that, we have the parameter buttons. In play single mode, these select voice memory banks I, A, B, C, and D. In edit and utility modes, they step through the parameters or jobs. After that, we have the data entry buttons. In play single mode, these select voices 1 through 32. In play performance mode, these select performances 1 through 24. In edit and utility modes, they're used to change settings or answer no or yes. After that, we have the master volume cursor buttons. When the cursor LED is off, these keys control the master volume of the entire unit. When the cursor LED is on, these keys move the blinking cursor. After that, we have the cursor buttons. This selects the functions of the master volume cursor keys. Last but not least, we have the phone jack. This is a jack for standard stereo headphones. Now the volume is controlled by the master volume. Using this jack will not affect the rear uh, panel outputs. If output 2 on the back of the unit is not plugged in, the phones will have a mono signal of both outputs mixed. Next, we'll examine the Yamaha TX81Z's rear panel. The first terminal on the back panel from left to right is the cassette terminal. Use a cassette cable to connect this to a data cassette recorder for saving and loading TX81Z data. Today, the same task can be accomplished using a digital recorder. After that, we have our MIDI through. All messages received at MIDI in are retransmitted unchanged from this terminal. After that, we have our MIDI out. TX81Z bulk data can be sent from this terminal. Then we have our MIDI in. MIDI messages coming into this terminal will make the TX81Z produce sound, and the TX81Z bulk data can also be received here. Last but not least, we have outputs 2 and 1. All sound produced by the TX81Z is sent from here to an external mixer or amplifier, whatever you have your equipment hooked up to. If only output one is used, it will transmit the combined signals from both outputs. In summary, it can be said that few instruments have changed the music world as thoroughly and as quickly as the legendary Yamaha DX7 synthesizer. However, with the declining popularity of that classic FM synthesizer in the late 80s, in 1987, Yamaha gave FM Synthesis another try with the TX81Z. TX81Z was economical but a powerful alternative to the company's second generation flagship FM Synthesizers. It had better sound quality, and though it provided four operators per patch, those operators differed from the more expensive units because they offered a full eight waveforms over that of the eight operator synths. Now, this added sonic flexibility gave the TX81Z and its keyboard sister, the DX11 keyboard, the power to produce far more complex 
patches than that of the previous four operator Yamaha synthesizers of that era. Well that my friends is a wrap. If you like this video give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now and join our group. We have new videos coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also leave a comment in the comment section below let us know what you think about this video and check us out on Facebook, Instagram and Spotify. While you're here, listen to some of the music, check out some of the other videos and playlists. They're designed just for you. Thank you for stopping by. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you soon.